point, we are ready for a new section in chapter 7. This one is on vectors. This section and the next section are both on vectors. Uh, vectors can be thought of uh, as vectors on a plane and also vectors in space. We're going to start out looking at vectors in a plane. In mathematics, quantities used to describe the motion of an object are typically divided into two quantities. We have scalars. Scalars are just constants. They're quantities that describe a magnitude. They're the size or the measure of the, ma of the quantity itself. And then there are vectors. Vectors have two things working for them. Uh, they are quantities that descri are described by both magnitude and also by direction. You have to have both parts for it to be a vector. So I have a couple quick examples here. A car travels 50 miles. The 50 miles is a constant. It doesn't tell direction. This is a scalar. But in the second example, it says a car travels 50 miles west. Well, because it gives uh, magnitude and it also gives direction, this is a vector. In fact, typically this type of a vector is referred to as a displacement vector because it says that the car traveled 50 miles, or it's been displaced 50 miles from its starting point. Now, the speed of an object is the scalar quantity. I always think, tell people that speed is the absolute value of velocity. It doesn't give direction, it just gives the size, it gives the magnitude, it tells how fast an object travels. Whereas the velocity of an object is usually referred to as a vector or a vector quantity because it also tells us not only how fast, but usually what direction. Now to represent this uh, on a plane, uh, on paper and pencil, with paper and pencil, we typically uh, put a vector as a line segment uh, that gives a specific direction. Notice, I have an example. It says, well, oh, this is not a line segment, this is a ray. No, this is a line segment. There's a, a starting point here, or an initial point, but this is also a point. The arrow is there, not to indicate that it goes on forever, but that it gives the direction of this particular vector. So we have vector PQ, we always start with the initial point, and then we go to the terminal point. So we know the direction, kind of like when you did geometry and you wrote out the name of a ray, and we also use what kind of looks like double absolute value bars around the vector to represent just its size or its magnitude. Now remember, as I mentioned back here with the car that traveled 50 miles west, uh, displacement, because we'll do displacement vectors, displacement is the object's overall change in position when it goes from point A to point Q. Now, vectors are equal if they have the same direction and the same magnitude. I try to draw a couple of vectors here that appear to be in the same direction and also appear to have the same length of the line segment. So we would say vector V is equal to vector W. It has to have both. It has to have the same magnitude and the same direction. So let's try an example about equal vectors here. Vector V extends from point uh, 0, 0 to point 3, 4. This is on the Cartesian plane. Vector W extends from the ordered pair negative 2, 3 to the ordered pair negative 5, negative 1. You're to find the magnitude of the vector and the direct and the excuse me, the magnitude of the vector, uh, vector V, excuse me, and the magnitude of vector W. Now there's a way to do this algebraically, but for right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a set of axes out. And I should try to be as neat as I can here. It looks like negative 5 is the smallest x value. Uh, looks like positive uh, 3 is the biggest x value. Positive 4 is the biggest y. Let's see if we can do 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 2, 3, 4, 5. 2, 3, 4, 5. So for vector v, it extends from 0, 0. That would be its initial point. To, vector, or to point 3, 4, so they're 3 to the right, 4 up. So that would be, and let's see if I can draw this halfway decent here. There we go. So this would be vector V here. Now its magnitude would be the length of this line segment, and because I can construct a little right triangle here, and this distance is 3, this distance is 4, I can use the Pythagorean theorem to find that the length of this uh, line segment here is 5. This is a 3, 4, 5 right triangle. So the magnitude of vector v 
is 5. Now I'll do vector w here from negative 2, positive 3, that'd be up here, to negative 5, negative 1, that would be down here. Let's see if I can get this halfway close. Now it started here and it ends here, so this is the terminal point, this is the initial point. Well, I can tell, the, I know what the answer is to be already, but let's see if we can find its magnitude. So again, if I was to construct a right triangle here, notice uh, the slope would be up 4 over 3, up 4 over 3. So even though my drawing doesn't look right, they have the same slope. So you would think, well, if they have the same slope, they're in the same direction, but you can see that they're not. They're actually in opposite directions. But the magnitude is also 5, so I'm going to write down that the magnitude of W is 5, but the answer here is no. They're, uh, they are in opposite directions. Remember, two vectors are equal if they have the same magnitude, which they did, but they also have, the same have to have the same direction, which they don't. So we're going to extend on this, though there's so much more to go with vectors. You can study vectors, and you will study vectors, uh, not only in this class, some in calculus, and then also in physics. You'll be doing it a lot in physics, especially when you hit college physics. And so let's see if we can get a good foundation from it here.